at power and instantaneous and average power specifically, but we're looking at how we have slightly different conventions for different fields. And specifically, we're talking about power systems and circuits. So in power systems, we're dealing with AC inputs, uh, but the notation is slightly different. So we use phasers here, but the first term of the phaser is going to be the RMS value of the input. And the angle is going to be the phase angle of that. When we look at circuits, we also can have an AC input and we can analyze the circuit. But when we use that convention, we tend to use magnitude here instead. So magnitude is the amplitude of the sine wave, not the RMS value. And the angle is going to be the same to, as the other one. So this is only slightly different. The, the difference between these two, only when you're working with sinusoids, but when you're working with a pure sinusoid, you know that the magnitude, x of m, is equal to root 2 times the RMS value. So you can convert between those two in that way. And really, it's just that difference between the two. But if you forget which one you're in, you're going to get confused. So in circuits, we use a magnitude in the phaser. And then in power systems, we use the RMS value. So when you're in the time domain, it just means that our setup is going to be usually, we put everything in terms of, so the magnitude in the front is root 2 v RMS. And we also tend to use um, assume the voltage is going to be zero and then we use a phase difference. It's not always the case, but just a generalization. So we would set up our time domain equation like this usually. And if you look at the video where we derive the instantaneous and average power in power systems, we use this setup. However, in circuits, we may use a slightly different setup. Ultimately, these are actually the same, but they're just different notations. So I just don't want you guys to get confused. So. Here is the setup for a conventional circuit. And here we're using the magnitude values and a little bit different, we put the phases back into each of the individual ones. So the magnitude of the current and then the phase here. If you look at the video that I've already posted, we already went through and derived the instantaneous power. And so we get this equation shown here and when we look at the average power, we just take this first term because that's a non-zero term. And then when we take the average of this one, the second term, because it's a cosine, it's going to go to zero. So we just look at that first term. That one goes down here. And we just plug back in this angle, phase angle here, and we got that. So let's just do this for the conventional circuit, or the convention for circuits using this setup on the right, and we'll just get that instantaneous power using this terminology. So here's our setup again, and here's our handy dandy trig identity to help us with the calculation. So let's just go through it. We have our power. We're just going to multiply the two together. So we're going to get Vm and then Im here. And we're going to get cosine of omega t plus theta v, and then multiplied by cosine of omega t plus theta i. So that's just putting them together, collecting some of the terms. And now we can use our trig identity here and replace it with those two cosines multiplied by each other. So here now we're going to put the 1 half in. And we just do our cosine of our two values subtracted. So omega t plus theta v minus omega t minus theta i. And then plus cosine of them added together. I'm going to put the two omega t's together plus theta v plus theta i. And we'll see that all these omega t's are going to cancel out. So we'll be left with Vm im over 2 in the front. And then we have cosine of theta v minus theta i. And 
plus cosine of 2 omega t plus theta v plus theta i. Okay, so that's our instantaneous power equation. A little bit messy. And when we want the average power, again, the cosine term uh, that is dependent on t will go to 0. So we'd just be left with the other, the first term. So I'm going to write this down here. P, so this would be vm over im over 2. And then we have the cosine of theta v minus theta i. So let's look at these two just compared to each other. And you'll see that the only real difference is going to be in the the first, like the terms in the front. And so if we're in the power system convention using RMS, we just have to multiply the voltage, RMS voltage times RMS current. But if we're using magnitude, we need to multiply those together and then divide by 2. So just don't forget this 2, because if you do, you're going to mess up all your calculations. And there's a slight difference in the um, the phase here, but actually it's it ends up being very minor. But wherever you start from, you can use the appropriate equation. And usually what we care about anyway is average power. So if you look at here, the average power, the phases, the subtraction and the phases ends up being the same between the two. So it's uh, theta v minus theta i. But the first term is what you have to look out for. So if you're in circuits and you're using the convention where you're given the magnitude, you take the, vo the voltage magnitude, current magnitude, divide by 2, and then multiply by the cosine of the phase difference between the voltage and the current. So that's it.